That's a great morning. There's some terrific demos out there. And I want to try them all. And this is a problem. It's quite hard to do. And uh, I, I found myself falling upon the kindness of strangers who have taken it from their good heartedness to set up demos uh, all around. And it, it's just so nice that you have this thing of um, people are so passionate about this just now that I've had colleagues give their living rooms over for the entire weekend just to burn people through their their cherished uh, vibe setup. So it, it's, you, you have to try it for yourself. And I hope all of you have tried the headsets because I'm, I'm a huge fanboy of uh, Unseen Diplomacy. Where's Unseen Diplomacy sitting? He's disappeared. That is an amazing game. And a GIF on a presentation just doesn't do it justice because it's hilarious. You feel like Tom Cruise when you're on your hands and knees with a, a torch and a screwdriver and you're crawling down an access tunnel. It's an absolute hoot. And I certainly encourage you all to I know that Birdley's here, try that one for sure, but all of these things are, are cheap as chips now, so get a hold of them for home as well. Um, if you go this late in the presentation, there's going to be a stock photography bingo here, so if you see any familiar faces, don't hate me, I use Google Image Search too. <laughs> this is what it used to look like, and, and not so very different. This is a marketing image from Virtuality, Kim, uh, 25 years ago. And basically, an agency was contractually mandated to give that insane, tripping your nuts off grin as soon as you put a headset off. And that has not changed since then. But look, there's fish, and she's not even holding her breath. We're going to come back to that. So I, I did the same thing, and I, apologies, I'm going to use some of your same slides. Uh, I, I did the pilgrimage. I, I was young, I was enthusiastic, I wanted to see what this VR buzz was all about because I knew it was just around the corner. And for me, this was in 1992, and this was the Trocadero in London, if any of you had seen it. It's closed now, these places have just disappeared, but they may well make a comeback, so we'll see. But there was also something very seedy about it. It was sinful, it was a stone's throw from Soho and all the sex shops. And it kind of felt tainted by some of that corruption, which is possibly what made it so delicious. And here's what you got. And uh, it was pretty much as disappointing as you would imagine it to be. For a start, it was five pounds of 90s money for about two minutes, which uh, wasn't exactly thrilling at the time. And you were subjected to something that looked a bit like this. And you may be impressed just with that clean retro vector look. No, this was as good as it got back then. <laughs> Plus 20 frames per second, so not, not quite what you were hoping for. And th this is what still keeps me up at night. I sometimes lay awake thinking, dactyl nightmare. Why the hell didn't they call it terror dactyl? These guys know nothing. <laughs> so I went home and drowned my sorrows and thought, well, okay, it's going to be a couple of years away. What will I do to kind of keep myself occupied till then? Let's watch some movies. And if you haven't seen at least three of these, that's the exit and you should take it because you don't deserve to be in this room. <laughs> now, I, I'm going to ask for a little bit of audience participation as well here. I, the clue is in the date. I'm going to go in chronological order. Anyone know this one? Oh, nice. Max. Brainstorm. Can you think of anything more terrifying than Christopher Walken downloading his brain into yours? Oh, that's scary stuff right there. Easy. Back to the future. Back to the future too. And I think he's just watching television there, but it's all these nice little asides starting to creep into the, the common culture. <laughs> what else? Teeth. We're going to come back to teeth too. That's important. Total recall. A classic. This is a lovely movie. I don't think anybody's going to get this. Uh, this is Wim Wenders, believe it or not, who did a lot of um, research with scientists about predicting what could happen. This is 25 years old today. And he had search engines and intelligent agents and VR goggles and people panicking about their batteries running out. It's, it's a really fascinating movie. Until the end of the world, I'd recommend you get it. And not so far from a dev kit for the Oculus there. I have not seen The Lawnmower Man yet, and I know I need to. I, I'm, I'm letting the side down in this one. Now we're getting cooler. Johnny Mnemonic. I, I think he has to eject his childhood memories because he's eight gigs short, but uh, uh, heady days. And Strange Days, that, that was another interesting one. That kind of 
was less obsessed about that technology and some of the cultural impact of, of what it could do to society. And it kind of brought that seediness back into it, which was interesting. And then this is amazing, that the hardware for this is terrific. This is virtuality with Denzel Washington. And there's a great tracking shot through this uh, VR lab where they have guys suspended from the ceiling running in space like this. And it looks hilarious, but you kind of want to be there as well. Uh, well, David Cronenberg, existence. Uh, the, the interface for this one, I think you have to plug something into your belly button and that's how it interfaced it. Did I get that right? I think, I think it was your stomach as opposed to... Uh, but it's a weird one, it's worth checking out. And then of course, the mighty matrix and uh, the rest is history. Except for a couple more, the cell is nice. They, they start having a bit more fun with what the interfaces can look like. And well, Minority Report, as envisioned by Jared Lanier himself, one of the great uh, uh, minds behind what we sort of see as VR today. And then I'd, probably my personal favorite movie of all time is Inception. So there we go. Uh, it always seemed like it was going to be two years away, and it just didn't bloody happen. It's that uh, little graph of yours that I think we have to blame. But if you wait long enough, good things do come around. And you'll notice they still use the same photographers, so there's that. <laughs> and I would suggest any money you've set aside for your hardware buy, budget about 10% for tooth whitening treatment. <laughs> because your mouth will be hanging over just in abject awe a lot of the time, if you do it right. And you know what? It was a coral reef. It came true. They absolutely nailed it 25 years ago. Here we are, same headset, same vision, but this time it's not Photoshop. Now it's real and you can go swimming. So we've had all of this imagery bombarded at you and I, I think a lot of people, their first VR experience can perhaps be a little underwhelming because it's, um, it, it's, it's difficult to get right. Uh, and there's nice ways of doing it and nasty ways of doing it. And I've given demos to maybe about, a, I'm going to say 100 people conservatively, just in, in my office just now. And I wanted to build an environment where they could go away and feel good about it and excited about it. and want to participate more and potentially move their product in that direction. So... How do we get this face? This, this is what we're aiming for. This is exhibit A. There's a great video called the Spielberg face on YouTube. Look it up. That's what we want to get to. Easy. Buy a loft apartment. That's step one. You'll probably want floor to ceiling windows. That, that's very important. Some hardware floors, exposed brickwork, optional. But uh, definitely drop some white design furniture sparsely around there and have a massive play area. That will give you that great big smile there. You, you, you'll see this a lot. And I think I saw it in another slide too. <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> that isn't my home office, but it's not a million miles from it. And if you think this image is traumatic, I, I honestly thought about removing this next slide from the deck because if, you, if you're of a of nervous disposition, this, this slide will upset you a little bit. So. Please don't tweet it. They'll never let me speak externally again, but you're sitting down. That's Steve Jobs. He's as bad as I am. Can you believe it? I, I don't feel so bad now. You, you can go home and think, clutter? I'm being creative. It's fine. But again, it's not conducive to, to a VR lab. So what can you do with what you have? Well, probably you've got something like this. And... It's a little exhausting, but you're going to be moving furniture quite a lot. Uh, and that's the beauty of committing to people coming over and giving the demos because you just, this is what you have to do on a regular basis, but you don't necessarily want to do it in an office environment. So what are you going to do to create a, a full-term installation? Well, if money and time is no object, you build the hollow deck and you create a cave system and you do something beautiful like this. I, I would love to have a room like this. And with the resources available, yeah, not going to happen either. What about this? You can make an infinite space by hanging yourself from the ceiling. You've got that super slidey floor. You can walk around. And if you are a little bit fed up of tripping over those wads of cash as you go to the bathroom at night, then this is possibly the solution for you. Uh, alternatively, you kind of do what we did up until fairly recently, which was 
create a soulless white box with echoing audio and it feels more like a hospital waiting room or something. But this, unfortunately, is, is largely the, the state of Google at VR, which is, is not the most sort of conducive first experience. I mean, for a start, you're, you're literally bowling your colleagues even over with a tether. Uh, and that, that doesn't go well for the rec room and you definitely don't want to play uh, paintball with that setup. Uh, so, so how do we create something a little more comfortable? Uh, SketchUp, that's also free. Uh, that used to be us, we, we've passed it on now, but other products may apply. Um, th th this was my first kind of grab at this and th this was when it was almost a skunk works thing and I just managed to secure a room from our facilities guys. Uh, but no budget for anything, basically. So this was me just nicking furniture from other areas of the office and hoping nobody would notice. Um, but the, the key thing to notice is uh, most of the space is dedicated to the play area because that's where people are going to be and you want to maximize that as much as possible. Um, off the back of that, facility said, well, you know what, we can probably bring up some funds, so go crazy. So I did. So if we could do some bespoke stuff, the idea behind this was we'll create a nice little partition because in a smaller room, this uh, square area on the right hand side is pretty much the exact five meters on the diagonal that Vive would suggest is the optimal room scale experience. Uh, and it made sense to just kind of minimize this over here. What, what I was a bit naughty on, I removed the pillar that you could see in that previous one. And they went, yeah, that looks great, health and safety. So apparently you need fire escapes. Uh, and so they don't let you kind of put a confined space in like that. So we had to tweak it a little bit. Uh, but the, the padding came from this and I thought that would be nice. It would be noise dampening. It will give you a bit more. We went four walls in the end. It'll give you a little more of a, a cozy space without people looking in the windows because you're going to look like an idiot. You may as well get used to that now. But if the demo is good enough, you don't care. So, so this is more or less where we're at. Some of the decorative elements still go in. I'll show you some photographs, but uh, because we lost the support of the orange stools there, we had to kind of build a framework and it gets a little bit fiddly. So there's a lot of dead ends, there's a lot of back and forth, there's a lot of compromise, but um, th this is pretty close to what we have. And here are some of the stages. So the poor old meditators were very big in mindfulness for a while. They got shifted to another room. Uh, we got the Royal Meditation Lab, so hence the little arabesque in the corner there, uh, which th these were actually kind of nice, but they weren't quite fitting it. They'd work on the cell. That's, that's a movie they'd work in. Uh, there, there was an interstitial phase, and this was something I hadn't fully appreciated. If you're doing this at home, you're probably not going to put acoustic foam fabric panelling up on the walls. Uh, so you might have to resort to some wallpaper or something because the, uh, the tracking units, the base units, broadcast this scanning laser and it bounces off a glass and we just would not get tracking in these corners so I just went and sellotaped a bunch of big pads of paper up there and that massively improved uh, the ability to uh, create the, the workable space so just putting paper up in the wall actually gave us a larger uh, volume to work with so you know sometimes down and dirty works you don't need a budget for this thing if you get creative. Uh, and then this is, this is a little bit closer. Uh, the lights have gone now, but you can see that this is a sort of operator section, which is still a little bit cramped. Uh, there's a spot for your shoes there over on your left-hand side. Those are not speakers, they're stools, but we can whisk them out of the way because there's not a huge amount of space there, but I was really adamant that we wanted to give the maximum space into the, the active area, which you, you kind of don't see so clearly here. Uh, but that, that's in the middle there, and it's, it's cozy. Now, it might look a little bit like an insane asylum. And you know what? That's okay because we want you to go crazy in there. Uh, what, what do we build it from? Well, Digitech, of course. Surprise, surprise. Um, the core of it was the magnificent NVIDIA GTX 1080, uh, which we haven't actually gotten around to putting in the machine yet because nothing needs this just yet. But if you want to be future-proof, this is the first of the NVIDIA series cards that was built from the ground up for VR. And so the games that will support some of the advanced rendering techniques in the future will need something like this. So if you're gonna shell out, half your budget is gonna go on this bad boy, but it looks amazing. Put a little glass panel on, get some lighting in there and money well spent. <laughs>
And the rest of it, it, it was pretty standard stuff. We, um, uh, it, it's, not, it's not absolutely top of the range, but it, it's decent stuff. And uh, I think the whole thing came to about 2000, as I said. Um, the, the core thing here was um, the solid state drive, just because you want this thing to boot up and down quickly, because you never know when you're going to be called upon uh, to launch a demo. And I'm still resistant to leaving PCs on. It seems like a waste. Uh, but the, the box was huge, and it's largely empty. And I don't know if you can see that thing on the top left. I, I thought it was somebody had accidentally put a, a motorcycle part in there. That's the fan. This thing was insane. It took two people to lift out the box. And the insulation was a nightmare. The single most complicated thing. But it looks cool, let me tell you. Um, but we built this whole box to really get the airflow going through. Uh, and that, that's super important because we actually wanted something where the fans wouldn't kick off. We wanted it to just be largely self uh, cooling because we didn't want the noise because that focus should be on the VR room and you want something that just sits there quietly just that quiet hum of power is what you're going for uh, and good cooling helps particularly with the, the car does this nice thing where it doesn't cool if it, if it doesn't have to and that's why we specifically chose this one uh, carpenter now not everybody is a carpenter but we have a guy that comes in once a week and just does stuff around the office so that it's quite a nice thing. So we, we get little fun stuff like that. So uh, we sketched out the breakout box because you'll find this stuff costs a lot of money. Don't leave it on the floor. So that's why we just put some little wooden pegs across the top there. You can hang stuff off where you're recharging the controllers. Uh, this thing is expensive. And it's not even that. If you stand on one of these and break it, you decommission the whole room and there's a long wait list. So I don't know how many controllers people have lost, but that gets very fiddly. Um, I felt so proud of this. There you go. I know you're engineering it. That's, I, what's that, 24 polygons? That's performance for you. Uh, but I, I, I felt, I mean, my God, I, I sit and type for a living, but I felt very manly when I went down to Migro, got myself some timber, did a bit of sanding, and made myself, because we've got like, a, we're budgeting 200 for a, a stand, and we just needed air coming up through the bottom because we put our carpet in. Uh, I'll get to the carpet in a minute too. Uh, but yeah, all about airflow. This, this was an interesting one. This is where the money comes in. You think it's going to be on the hardware. For us, it was the carpets and the, and the paneling. Uh, and it was actually an important one for me because I... Uh, well, I'll, I'll flip to the next one. No shoes. Believe it or not, this, this can be a little contentious uh, because... Don't tell me to take my shoes off. You'd be surprised. But I think it's important, and I'll tell you why. We had uh, our sales team bring people in for demos from time to time. We had one of the marketing executives from Digitech, ironically enough, had come in, and we gave her the demos. And it was so charming to see her, full business attire, lying on the ground, making moss angels on the floor, looking up at the wind and the leaves and the trees in the gnomes and goblins demo. And you just think, Yes, when, when you get these incredibly straight-laced looking people regressing to childhood, you know you've got something special there. And that's kind of the vibe I'm kind of going for in this room. You know, just a nice, soft, cozy, cuddly, safe space. Uh, the, the chaperone grid that you know, this is the kind of bane of immersion because every time it pops in, it's like, yeah, you're not really there, you're in a room. Um, so I, I tone this down a little bit. Uh, I, my settings are to set it to red because visually it's a contrasting color, but the opacity is down. So I kind of get the color being the contrasting element. And I don't use the grid, I use the squares because the way it overlays, it's less jarring. Uh, and unfortunately, because we had the smaller room, we've got this direct mapping from the chaperone walls, which when you're in that kind of space, you almost give 10% of your internal CPU cycle into where am I in the real world. And just a simple thing of being able to reach out and touch and have that direct one-to-one -one relationship, short of having a room this size and, you know, a, a university and a research budget and you had some amazing rooms, guys. I'm so jealous. Um, th this is how we get around it. And just that soft fabric in the walls kind of helps with that as well because we've, we've had a few impact events. Uh, and, and the lighting. Um, I think in the title of the talk, I, I just, I, I really felt there's an element of theatre to it where... When people come in for the first time, the experience has already started for them. So they come in and I want to give them a light show. I wanted to give them that nice, the light, the sound. So before they're even in the headset, they're kind of already in that vibe and experience. 
And so we got this. This is lovely. This isn't one of... Uh, Philips do the Hue thing, and you can buy the strips, and you can do one of these installs yourself, but they give you your little special effects pad there, which is kind of nice. And we have... This is our... Uh, this is Vesper Peak. Nice little blue kind of sensation of altitude, bit of a breeze blowing. Uh, here's trials and tattooing. Can you feel the desert dust and the, and the sun beating down in your face? You know, it's, it's all about storytelling and you, and you can start right early on. Uh, the audio is kind of tricky. Um, this by far is the best experience you're gonna have. You've got that fully 3D immersive soundscape completely around you with uh, you know, this perfect binaural recreation of what you'd hear in the real life. But you don't know what people are carrying around in their ears. When you get 100 people through in a room in a summer, that can get a little bit nasty. So we kind of go back and forth on that. Quite apart from the fact you're having to shout instructions at somebody, um, you could invest in a nice push button mic. Problem there is once you get a few of these dialogue boxes, you rapidly lose the will to live and that's not how I want to be spending my weekends, but this was the single most complicated part of the install, getting a mic come out on the Vive display, but there are some good articles on Reddit. I'd recommend it. It's certainly better at shouting through closed ear headphones, or just do what we did and just get some desktop speakers. Um, it's not perfect. You lose some of the 3D audio cues, so sometimes you have to say, look, there's a goblin in a tree and he wants that peach. Just knock it down for him. But it, it's a more comfortable experience and there's something very vulnerable about having your eyes covered and your ears covered and if people are coming in and out of the room it, it's just a bad experience so it's back to that feeling of safety you can give people um like i say you don't know where they've been slightly alarming image uh condoms for vr headsets did you know they exist uh vrcover.com the best investment you will make in your in your room i guarantee it uh, and, and always have a wipe down at the end of the session because uh, you don't know who washes their hands when they go to the toilet. This is the only way to be sure. Okay, so um, yeah, the, the philosophy is, I, I know this is high tech and exciting and, and cutting edge, but um, you're a kindergarten teacher again, so enjoy it. Um, you, you, you're trying to engage in that childlike sense of wonder. This is the sort of, this is what you want to channel. Uh, and not, not laws, let's say guidelines, keep it simple. So for me, that's giving people really simple demos without a lot of complexity to them. Um, they're in their space now. When they're in there, just let them do it. Don't, don't talk to them, don't instruct them. Let them discover this stuff for themselves because it's playful. It's back to, you know, there, I, I did the buzzword, okay. Um, but let them have that experience at their own speed because there's no right or wrong. This isn't a video game, there's no score. They're there to have fun. Just stand back and only step in when they're really, really stuck or struggling. Uh, and you, you may have done this a few times before, but it, it literally could be their first time. So, so be kind and patient and, you know, let, let them have their moment. Um, and then I, I can share this. This I know, I know we're, we're kind of going on in time, but uh, the blue is fantastic. This is the first one I give to people uh, because um, it's awesome. Uh, and you don't need a controller. It, it's really straightforward. They don't have to worry about the, what the buttons do. They can just go in there. They can walk around. I don't tell them about the chaperone walls. I've never seen somebody jump off the deck of the ship yet. So this is a nice safe one. Uh, this is a, a personal favorite. This is John Favreau, who is the movie director from Iron Man, The Jungle Book, Zathura, which is a great movie again. Um, this is so charming and a great storytelling exercise with no words. All with eye contact, a lot of stuff with eye contact here, and very beautifully done. Um, you, when, when grown men get a lightsaber in their hand for the first time, you hear the gasp. Like, oh my goodness, it's, this is great, this is a fun one. And it's a time demo too, and this is useful because people could spend an hour in there if, if they wanted to, but if you just stack a couple of these up, you can curate something if they've got five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, you don't want to be in the position where you said, back to reality, get that off your head. So these things end and then they just, they find a natural end point. Vesper Peak I love, this was my first one. And this brought home to me, you can walk around in this? Unbelievable, that blew my socks off. And this was, I was so glad for the guy that did my first demo because I had been waiting a long, long time and it far exceeded my expectations. I didn't think it would be as good as this in my lifetime. 
And here we are just thinking, well, I'm old. And I get another 40, well, all right, 30 years of development on this stuff. That's an exciting time to be in an old folks home. Uh, and th th this is a classic. This is probably the high bar for me. And if you're a portal nut like myself, um, just dream come true. Uh, oh, Everest. This is fairly new. It's 20 bucks, but well worth it. This is the first one that almost feels mature. It's not just a tech demo. It's a fully fledged experience uh, in its own right. It's, it's beautiful. It's moving. It's profound. Uh, give this one a go, definitely. Don't, don't hesitate. Buy this one for sure. Uh, and then leave them with a smile. Uh, here's some of my lucky volunteers. Uh, and I, I create a little gallery and I let them upload this to their Facebook pro uh, Google Plus profiles. This is for the Google Plus profile. Uh, pass it on. Thank you very much.